Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, you're going to be talking about cluster bombs. That's right. We're talking Armada. And we're talking about an upgrade. It's an older upgrade, not one you probably see very often. If you uh, have been playing for a long time, you may have seen this used once or twice. But if you've been playing more recently, you probably don't see this card used very much at all anymore. I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. When was the last time somebody ran cluster bombs against you? Or when was the last time you actually ran cluster bombs against somebody else and how did it perform i never see this card used and uh, i figured i wanted to kind of make uh make a video about it because i think it's a cool card that's got some potential and i kind of want to showcase a build that i've got uh, using it but the problem is i only have two of these so that's what we're going to be talking about today um do want to remind you guys about the 12 days of life day going on uh, i've been giving away stuff all month long and uh if you want to have a chance to win any of these giveaways you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos it's that simple i'm actually going to be doing a giveaway later on in this video so uh you know what maybe you should watch all the way to the end see if you won something all right anyway um that being said uh i want to talk about cluster bombs so cluster bombs comes in the home one expansion and that's the only place you can get it right now, which kind of it, it lends itself to this growing list of really, really cool upgrades that you're that are faction locked because you can only get it in one, you know, in, in one expansion and a single faction. So if you're, you know, if you're an Imperial player, you don't have access to this upgrade uh, unless, of course, you want to go ahead and buy a ship that you're not going to use. If you play both factions, you're probably fine, but still, you're only getting it in one place. Now, in recent Armada waves, they've started to get better about putting, you know, non, I guess, non faction locks because it's not, you know, faction locked usually means that it's only available to one side and it's ineligible to be equipped by the other side. However, uh, it's like, I guess, financially faction locked because, you know, you're, you can only get it in a rebel ship. Uh, but yeah, since Empire players can use this, if this were to come out today, my guess is that it would come out on both sides. However, uh, that doesn't really help us when this is something that came out in Wave 2 of Armada. So it's been out for a long time, back when they were kind of forcing you to buy across the aisle. And they're really not doing that so much anymore. But there are still a lot of good cards that are faction locked, at least as far as which expansion they come in. Uh, and forcing people to want to buy across the aisle and also forcing you to not be able to run a whole lot of them because this is uh, a card that I would like to actually run a whole lot of. So what does Cluster Bombs do? Well, it's a defensive retrofit. It costs five. It says after a squadron performs an attack against you, even if you are destroyed, you may discard this card to roll four blue dice. And that squadron suffers a damage for each hit or crit icon rolled. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I think are really cool about this particular wording of this card uh, that I think have maybe gotten better over time uh, and, and that really kind of make me like it. And uh, first off, this isn't an attack. It's just, it's, 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 it's not a counter attack. It's just an effect. It's just dealing damage to a squadron. Now, this is particularly nice because aces like to be able to scatter against attacks and that's one of those things that uh, can really hamper you there's a lot of aces out there that uh, that are really hard to kill and then they can fly away before you can finish them off and then they can go heal or or just kind of flee the battle at the end and this is a way for you to really be able to kill some of the tougher aces um, there are some aces that are uh, extremely nasty to, to deal with um, like, I'm going to point out one that has been giving me a hard time lately, and that is Sayana Ri. Um, while you're defending, the attack is treated as obstructed. And, well, that means, like, she's a lot of times she's very, very hard to be able to attack as with, with, with ships, because a lot of times the ships may only have one die that they're throwing at her. And uh, this means you can't even start those attacks. So she's so hard to kill. But... If she's attacking you, you can pop that, and you will probably pick her up and remove her from the board before she can do anything. It won't be obstructed because it's not an attack. She won't get to scatter because that's not an attack. She won't get to counter because it's not an attack. She won't get to brace because it's not an attack. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of rambling a little bit at this point, but it's a really cool way to deal with certain types of squadrons that are very pesky. The other thing is it's also not subject to escort, uh, you know, like certain other things are. So if you maybe three different squadrons, 
squadrons are attacking you, you can find the highest value one, go for that. You can potentially do four damage with a single cluster bomb. Uh, so you know you can get you can remove some pretty uh, some pretty valuable squadrons. So I've just got Imperial squadrons loaded up right here. Or if you've already done some damage, maybe a whole bunch of uh, ties are attacking you, and you go for the leader and you take out Howlrunner, and now all of a sudden those other ties you know don't get their leader bonus anymore. Um, you know you can potentially take out somebody like Major Rhymer or something like that. There's a lot of really cool things that can potentially happen there. So what kind of build would I want to run? Uh, you know, th this on that and, and, and why don't more people use it? Well, one of the main reasons, let's say I have got an Imperial Imperial 2 Star Destroyer. Uh, well, I could put cluster bombs on there to kind of help protect me. Um, you know, and, and that makes sense. But but on most of your big ships that have defensive retrofit, you're usually going with electronic countermeasures. And if not electronic countermeasures, uh, a lot of times it's early warning system. These two are, you know... I think ECM is by far the most popular. It's, it's, everything else is a race for second place. In the race for second place, sometimes it's early warning system. Sometimes it's even reinforced blast doors. Sometimes you'll get reinforced blast doors on a ship. But uh, but really, I think reinforced blast doors is more common on maybe an MC-80 that's got two defensive retrofits. Uh, that might be have been one of the ideas on why they put it out there in the MC-80 uh, Home One because it had you know you could get two defensive retrofits and then so maybe we'll go ECM and cluster bombs and that may have been an idea. But also at the time, a lot of people were still running advanced projectors, uh, which would be a good card if not for XI-7s completely shutting it down. Uh, and then also, you know, with some of your other option is redundant shields right now, which is just not that good, especially considering it's a little overcosted and it takes up your modification slot. Never been a big fan of redundant shields, just doesn't end up working out all that well. So, cluster bombs ends up being, you know, kind of low on that list. But I think there's other ships that we don't really need to, like, I mean, granted, we could take somebody like maybe a gladiator and put Minister Tua on there and then... And then, you know, then all of a sudden, hey, now we have something we didn't have before, and now we can we can do cluster bombs that way. Something something strange like that. But no, 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 we're not going to do that. I'm going to run Architons, because the Architons is a small ship that has access to the defensive retrofit. And we don't usually need ECM, because we don't have, like, that one lone brace. So ECM isn't really something we need to put on the Architons. Now, Reinforced Blast Doors came with the Architons, and that's a pretty good option here. However... From my experience, it's a little risky because you're kind of a slightly squishy ship. You're not always guaranteed to survive once you start taking damage and really be able to use reinforced blast doors. A lot of times you will be killed before you can use it. So for me, reinforced blast doors isn't an auto-include. Most of the time when I run an Architons, I don't run you know any defensive retrofit at all. Uh, but... I think maybe we can change that and start using this as an opportunity to run cluster bombs. So uh, rather than run the light cruiser, I'm going to do I'm going to build you a different type of architons. So I'm going to build you an architons with a command cruiser with cluster bombs. And the idea for this type of uh, ship configuration is I want this to be somebody who like goes into a fleet that doesn't have squadrons. This is going to be a squadronless fleet. Hey, if you followed me for a while, you know I love to run squadronless fleets. So surprise, surprise. But uh, on top of that, you know the problem is this is only going to work against a single squadron, uh, and and I recognize that. So what's our defense? Well, for first thing is we need to be able to get away from big B wing swarms and things like that. So I am going to absolutely put engine techs. And that's kind of why I went with the command cruiser is that I wanted to, you know, have access to engine techs to make up for that bad mobility and be able to get out of there. So if I do get kind of overwhelmed by squadrons, I can, you know, I can blow up, you know, the one that's doing the most damage, get some points out of it and then hightail it out of there and hopefully they won't be able to take me out uh, at the same time. That is the, that's the hope. That's, that's kind of what we're hoping for. Um, now, with that said, um, I think there's some other things that we can do. I, I, I'm looking at d using the new upgrade linked turbo laser towers here, which is also an, an anti-squadron option. Now, this is going to let me potentially kill two squadrons in one turn uh, because uh, the cluster bombs is not an attack, so it's not counted against the whole linked turbo laser. Um, you know, if I'm attacking a squadron, I can add two dice of any color, so now I can add a blue and maybe, you know, 
uh, two red or a blue and two black or something like that. Uh, you know, and, and I can go after a squadron. If the squadron then attacks me, I can attack or not attack back, but I can pop cluster bombs and potentially kill somebody. That and this and, and these two could work together. And maybe you've got a fire spray or something like that's coming after you. Maybe you could get enough damage that cluster bombs finishes them off. So it could even help you take out some of the big nasty squadrons. Uh, this could also work towards taking out something big like maybe one of these uh, decimators. Or something like that. Now, they've got eight hulls, so you wouldn't be able to do this all in one go. But uh, well, I mean, in theory, it is possible. It is theoretically possible. Uh, it you could you know add two red. You know you could add a you could end up with five damage just from the link turbo laser attack if you because again you're probably gonna want to at least put one red in there so you can reroll it. So you could end up you know taking out a decimator uh, in one round if they attack you and you roll back with cluster bombs after doing five to them. There is definitely that possibility there. And I think that's a fun, I think it's a fun possibility. So you've got a lot of anti-squadron or a lot of single anti-squadron potential and potentially double anti-squadron here. Um, but really we've got a good anti-ship presence here too. And that's the idea of running squadron lists is if you do go up against a heavy bomber list, you need to be able to get in there and take out those carriers and leave the bombers unable to kind of really follow you so you can get out there, you know, get, move in there, take out that quasar or take out that bomber command center or, you know, that assault frigate or whoever is activating them and then, and then move away and then fly away. So... Uh, in order to try and take out that that carrier, I am going to put the one thing that is really going to help you punch through, and that is going to be Intel Officer. Intel Officer, because we're going to run multiples of these. We're going to run four of these Architons. Boom, boom, and boom. So we've got four of them now. That is, uh, that's a lot of firepower. We're going to get three dice on the side. Uh, we're going to get a roll, a re-roll out of all of them. And for double arcs, we can also get that shot out of the front. So that's going to be good. We're going to have Intel Officer. We're going to have four Intel Officers. So, oh, I don't care if you've got ECM and you want to brace. By all means, my friend, brace away because you won't ever be doing it again. And if you think you're going to save it for the next attack, the next attack is going to do the exact same thing. So you're never, you know, you're only going to be able to brace one time. That's kind of the idea here. And between the rerolls, I think we'll have some help there. Now, this isn't the type of Architons list I normally run. I usually run Vader as a commander, Enhanced Armament, or something like that, because I want the extra die and all of that. And here, I'm not going to be able to concentrate fire as much. I might be able to squeak in a little bit of concentrate fire. But for the most part, this is a, one of those lists where I'm going to agree with the popular people who are uh, more successful in the game than I am. And I'm going to say always be navving with this particular type of list because you want to be able to trigger engine techs. You also want to get the extra yaw. And in this ship configuration, nav is going to be a godsend. It's going to give you take a ship that has not the most maneuverable and turn it into an incredible maneuver. Uh, machine that can go virtually anywhere it wants to go uh, between the extra yaw from a nav dial and an engine text. Now, first round, I would imagine I'll bank a nav, so I have a nav token, uh, and then this will allow me at some point, maybe either on turn three or turn four, to be able to have all of them do a concentrate fire command to really try to pop those carriers. However, and then I can have the nav token to at least trigger engine techs so I can still try and get out of there. Uh, but I'm not done yet. I'm, uh, I'm going to add a, uh, I'm going to add a Gazanti. And the Gazanti is really there for my commander because my commander is going to be our new commander that's coming with the Onager. And that's going to be General Ramadi. Now, General Ramadi is going to make up for the fact that I can't concentrate fire because he's going to give all of my ships so much love uh, by making their attacks. Really, they can't be obstructed at this point, so placing obstacles is going to be fun. Well, they can be obstructed if it's from a card effect. Uh, but, um, yeah, so if I've got a ship in the way, they're going to get an extra die, which is just so, so very, very good. Uh, so now I'm rolling four dice out the side and potentially a fifth, once I, uh, for that one round that maybe I do queue up a concentrate fire. And depending on how things are going, maybe I will run into situations where I don't need to move that much. I can make the judgment call to, uh, to dial in extra concentrate fires as needed, depending on, uh, you know, how, you know, how the game is looking. And because of course I will always push for that. Um, 
Now, this right here is five ships. Uh, I'm not doing too well on activation, but because they're so maneuverable with engine text, I don't really, I'm not beholden to like, I can be pointing one way and I can completely turn around, you know, and be turned around and going the opposite way by the end of turn two. So, you know, it's not really like deployment's not going to hurt me all that much um, in this in this particular case. I do want the Gazanti in between me and my opponents, though. So I'll kind of fly that Gazanti a little farther out. Now, um, if I had more points, I might consider trying to do something like Minister Tua and ECM to make sure that uh, that Gazanti lives and then putting... Uh, the suppressor title on there that would make this Gazanti very hard to kill and also make it uh, kind of disrupt my opponents as they come in that would get me 400 points exactly but at you know it, it, if you do that you know I feel like this is a list that kind of wants to be first so this way when somebody does get surrounded by bombers I can activate them first and fly them out of there so that they don't get killed however uh, if you're okay with being second player, then run Tua and ECM. But I'm going to drop Tua and ECM and just go a 391, which is a pretty good initiative bid. So we can try to be first player and get our shooting done. Uh, and then, you know, this isn't a list that absolutely has to have first player. So I think you can go with Tua and ECM or without Tua and ECM. And if you want, also you could pop slicer tools on there and have a very, very small first player bit. 398 is not always going to get you first player. It's very rarely going to get you first player, but it's sometimes, and I'd say, because a lot of times you're going to go up against 399 and 400 builds where people just don't care, and that'll sometimes get you first player. Uh, but I like 391. I think 391 is a safe bet. You could also drop suppressor and go down to 387 if you really want to push it. Or even maybe drop a single uh, intel officer off of one of your ships. Maybe drop it off of your flagship who you might move last anyway and might not really need intel officer that much. So there's a lot of ways you can do a little bit of wiggle room on, on this type of stuff. Uh, for our uh, objectives, I am definitely going with opening salvo. I think that's the clear, very, very clear winner here. Uh, and if your opponent has opening salvo and you end up choosing, definitely go for that one because it's okay if you get the extra red dice uh, because you've got linked turbo laser towers. So you've got a little bit of, of fun there. Um, and uh, yes, uh, for our yellow, uh, for our yellow, I've always liked, anytime I'm not running squadrons, I really like to run fleet ambush because it takes away the deployment disadvantage. So, because all squadrons have to be deployed last, your opponent's going to have to deploy all of their ships first, and you're going to be able to, since you've got five, you're actually going to be doing pretty well. Uh, and also, you're going to split their fleet up. So I really, really like fleet ambush. Uh, for navigation, again, I want to lose um, you know, the advantage of not having any squadrons, or I want to lose that disadvantage. So I'm going to go with solar corona in this case, as opposed to superior positions, primarily because uh, superior positions, if they have got squadrons, you're going to score a bunch of points by you know the few that they bring behind me and get shots in. So solar corona is the way to go. And well, I think that is, uh, that is the build. Um, and uh, by the way, if in case you're curious, I am using Ryan Kingston's Fleet Builder, and uh, you know that is uh, the fun with cluster bombs. And uh, the, the whole point of this is I'm taking a, a list that can hopefully take out a flagship or hopefully take out the carriers, uh, not really have to worry too much about the, its own lack of squadrons, and have great mobility. Uh, and then if the squadrons do come after me, I can take them out with cluster bombs. I'm not saying that this is a list that's going to totally uh, dominate, but I think this is a list that would turn some heads because people are going to be really surprised to see cluster bombs. And the other thing that's cool about them is they might even be a deterrent. They might be a deterrent that uh, says like, well, do I really want to attack him just yet? Like you might have your opponent just opting not to attack. And hey, if that happens even once, there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. And the other thing that's kind of cool about cluster bombs is it's not range dependent so even if somebody's you know extending the range of their squadrons somehow uh maybe through somebody like uh where is our little friend here uh, well a major rhymer for example um you know it's still not going to uh, impact you know you still be able to use cluster bombs you still be able to use cluster bombs if the attack was obstructed that came into you and you know you still uh you know because it's not an attack 
so it's just it's a fun thing, and uh, I think it'll it'll you know if you're looking to change up your meta a little bit, and I think people should do that from time to time. Bring some stuff that nobody runs, and just kind of see how you know everybody reacts to it. Um, I think that's a very fun thing to do. All right, you guys, I've got a giveaway winner to announce, and this will be a fun one. This one is actually for Armada related promos, and this is for an ISD one and ISD two promo. Uh, so if you are Brad Butcher, you congratulations! You've won these two for Star Wars Armada, uh, and actually that uh, that ISD two is from the massing at Celis. That's that's an old old school promo, but yeah. So uh, you're gonna win both of these. Uh, so you've got uh, until the end of the month to claim these, and otherwise they're gonna roll over into Patreon, just like all the other uh, goodies that. Uh, well, whoops, that's uh, and that's luxury playstyle. That's for my uh, X-wing videos. Hopefully, they'll make some uh, some some. <laughs> I got turned on the wrong graphic. I was trying to turn that graphic off. Uh, but yeah, but hopefully they'll make some Armada tokens here pretty soon. But uh, yeah, all right, guys. Well, that's all I got for you today. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and also thank the patrons. If you're interested in supporting this channel, you can check out the links in the description below. I uh, always am happy to see new patrons show up, and uh, you guys are going to get lots of stuff uh, next month, because uh, anything that goes unclaimed will roll over into patron giveaways. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Also, uh, yeah, thank you for your continued support. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much, and as always, have a great day.